Good evening, everyone. Good afternoon, Adinilso, and hey there in Brazil. All right, I was able to gather you all, my friends from all over, especially for Adinilso. It's his first time talking to an international crowd. He's a little bit nervous, but there's no reason to because he's been assisting in all these meetings for such a long time already. I can tell you guys that he's my right hand. Even if I haven't met him in person, I know him a lot. And I would like him to introduce himself to you guys. And I really hope that you guys are gonna have a good time with him as much as I enjoy talking to him in all these meetings. Okay, Adenilson, please introduce yourself and just relax, everything's gonna be just fine. Okay, hello guys, how are you? It's a pleasure for me to be here today as a guest. And yeah, I'm Daniel Sobrag. I live in this small town called Pacaembu. Pacaembu is a, a indigenous name, you know, it's a, a paca that is an animal and embu that is a fruit. Later on, I'm gonna show you the paca, the animal and the embu, the fruit that we have here in Brazil. This small town, it's a kind of, a, 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 Usually I say that is a, a village because we are here, we have like 13,000 people living here without counting the prisoners because here we have four uh, prisons and together I think there is 6,000 prisoners here living and they are considered citizens of this, this city, you know. And yeah, I'm married, I'm, I'm 49, yeah. Um, I have been married now, this next month will be like for 24, 22 years, yeah. We, ha we have a 17 year old daughter and I work as a, today we changed our profession. Before it was a um, prisons um, security agent. Now we call we are called Pino um, police officer. We, we are kind of a police here. Uh, there is a civil police and military police. And now we have the penal police here also. It was just created. And I've been working there for uh, more than 26 years. I also like to draw a lot. I like to draw caricature, you know, since I was just a kid. I I like technology in general. I'm a geeky guy. And also I like to run a lot. I have three worldly passions. First, my family, second, uh, running and third, learning English. I started learning English by myself in 2019. Before that, I had no idea about English and I started by myself. And yeah, this is a little bit about me. And if you guys now, I I, I leave the word open for you guys to ask me uh, whatever questions you want. Okay, to Daniel, so it was a very nice introduction. I mean, if you guys could hear his self-taught in English. Isn't that amazing? Well, anyhow, I'm surprised. So if anyone has a question, please start and then we can continue. Okay, Ara, please go ahead. Um, I So I wanted to ask because I'm fascinated kind of like in your career area, how did you get into that? So like, did somebody introduce you to it? Did you find it by yourself? Is it a difficult job to do in Brazil? Yeah, uh, in order to be a, a public worker, we are a public worker. We, we work for the, the state of Sao Paulo. Uh, by the way, my city is located in the countryside of the state of Sao Paulo. And in order to get that, uh, um, I I took a test. It was not difficult back then because a lot of people, they were afraid of getting this test, you know, because it's some, something unheard of. You know, in 1998, we had just a few prisons here. And I remember, me included, I was a little afraid to, to take this test, but it was good. I got the 15th place. It was like, in, um, I think, 200 um, people that got the job. And uh, it was something that we didn't have here, this kind of reason. My plans was to, to teach, you know, I, oh, I, I forgot to tell I'm graduating in biology in 1998, the same year that I started working as a, a, a prison prison police officer. And then uh, I decided to take this test because, you know, the salary 
was uh, bigger than the 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 salary of a teacher and and also there was no need to me to leave my my city and I could stay here with my family and not to move to another city because in order to to teach I needed to to, to leave my city and to go to a, a bigger city you know well I think it was a great answer right or all right, uh, Nikki, please go ahead. Hi, sorry, I, I joined the uh, meeting a little bit late. I don't know if you already said um, what I'm about to ask. Uh, I heard that you're self taught in English. How long did that take you? Oh, okay, yeah, learning is a process. I'm I consider myself a, a learning uh, a learner until now, even a, a, a Portuguese learner, <laughs> but it is like something that I didn't. Uh, think about learning English because I I had no idea about it traveling and then I I went to uh, uh, my my cousin's house and to participate in the uh, a famous race here in Brazil called São Silvestre race it is an international race I think you guys know about these races São Silvestre race and I went there because I was working from from uh, Monday to Friday. Uh, my my work days are like we work in shifts, you know, like we work 12 by 36, 12 hours working by 36 resting. And I was working from Monday in an in, in IT sect, section uh, session there in my job and I, I I could participate in this race. And then I, I talked to my cousin and uh, he uh, used to go to Orlando, United States every year. And his son knew how to speak English very well, but I was counting on them, you know, like he, I decided to travel with them because our daughter, her dream was to, to visit uh, Disney World. And then I was counting, I was relying on my, my cousin to speak English. I didn't think about learning English, but then uh, we, he couldn't travel and we decided, me, my wife and our daughter to to travel, and I decided to learn English by myself. So I paid an online course, like for six six weeks, and then it triggered in me like the the, the desire to learn English. As I, I as I said, uh, learning English uh, became a passion, you know. So then it was easier for me because I I liked a lot to learn English, and then I decided to watch movies in English and to to all my uh, all the things in English, you know, to read books. Um, yeah, English brought me something that I didn't have before, like reading books, like watching series. I I didn't watch any series and all in English. And yeah, and over time I, I was improving. And like I started in January 2019, you know, like it, it's for me, I I I realized that I, I started learning English when I uh I knew that I I had no rush to learn English, you know, like, yeah, let, let, let it go, you know, let, let the, the timing works. Okay. Does it answer your, your question? Okay, great. Ooh. Okay, Richard. Oh, thank you. Adelso, firstly, congratulations, because uh, for a person that is self-taught, your English is impeccable. Um, yeah, thank I'm you. just going to say that. Thank you. I'd like to delve into your childhood and where you grew up. Mm -hmm. uh, if do you have brothers and sisters and your, yeah. what type what type of life? Okay, I have four sisters. I am the only son. Uh, and then my childhood was I. It was not a good childhood. I I was born in a poor family, agricultural family. My my daddy uh, uh, during. His whole life, he is working. Even today, he is eighty today, and he keeps working in in the farm, in the farm, you know. And I I remember that I didn't like to go to to work in the field, you know. I was always complaining, and then I was saying to myself, one day I'm gonna leave this place and I'm gonna go to the city, you know. And my dream was to work in the city. I didn't like to work in the field. And I have three um, older uh, uh, older sisters and one younger. And and uh, I have two sisters that they 
In fact, today I have just one sister living here in the city, two, the, the youngest and the oldest to move to Curitiba, the capital of Paraná, uh, another state, and another one moved to, to another city in the same state. Um, and today I, I have my, my parents, today are alive, thank you God, and uh, my daddy uh, today is 80, as I, I, I said, and my mom last week turned 77, and they are healthy and my my daddy always my my daddy never uh drank you know never smoked and and i'm following his steps i i don't drink like a uh, soda i don't drink alcoholic drinks you know and i i'm always looking for a way to improve my my health you know running and yeah this is i i think that i was uh asking to to a friend what uh was the secret of having a, a long life you know and he said that there is some parts in the world that call blue uh, blue points. I don't know. There is uh, regions in the world, like in Japan, Okinawa, and also in Italy. The people there they lived more than a hundred years, and they say that the the people there they, you know, they don't stop working, they don't drink alcohol uh, beverage. They always are having relationship with others. And my my dad is like that. You know, my my dad is always going to play with uh, his friends and yeah and today i'm really grateful because my daddy that got me a job when i was 18 in the city when i was 18 my daddy there, there is this uh, uh association of farmers and he got me a job there and i started working as uh you know selling uh, agricultural products you know fertilizers and pesticides and you know i started working this field when I started uh, working, when I was 18, I moved to the city, but I didn't like, <laughs> but yeah, it is interesting because back then I, I, I can say that I hated working uh, in the fields, but today we are always looking for a way to, to go back to, to the past when we, we, we are kids, you know, even though we complain, we, uh, we, we miss that time, you know, together with the family, with my sisters and that's it. Okay, that was good. That was very, very good. Hey there, are you there? Hello, hi, Adenilson. Hello, hey nice there. Oh, okay. nice to see you, man. Nice. So, Adenilson, uh, is there some social service in prison to integrate the prison? Uh, sorry, uh, is, sorry. Is, is there some social service? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. To integrate the, mm -hmm. the business. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Okay. Do you participate mm -hmm. in any? Yeah, Do you we. Participate? No, our profession it's like to re re educate the the prisoners. You know, we are called to 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 prepare them to go back to the society. This is our function, I would say. But. Um, yeah, social uh, social services. We have their uh, so social workers. We have psychologists that they uh, they hear the, the prisoners. Uh, there is a a list that can be uh, heard by the the social workers and the, the psychologists. There is a a group of people they need to to, to bring. Sorry, it's coming a noise from someone. I don't know. It's coming a noise. I and they, yeah, and then um, there is a group of people. They analyze, they see the the improvement of the prisoner that uh, the prisoner when they are there to see that they they have the right to to um, go back to the society, you know. And there is a group. There is uh, the they uh, they are scheduled to to appointments uh, uh, every day. And they are hurt and to see the, the behavior them. But I don't, yeah, they say that uh, they listen also uh, what the, uh, what is the, what the behavior of the prisoner inside looks like, you know. And then we say, oh, it's a, a prisoner that has a good behavior there. And, or if it is a, a prisoner that uh, has not, you know, we also say, though, know, this prisoner uh, has not a good behavior to, to go to back to society or to, Go well, and uh, yeah, to to move to another prison more 
you know, like we say, the, the, the prison that I work, it's called like a maximum security prison. It's a maximum security penitentiary. But there is another kind of prison. There, there is a semi-open, semi-open, semi-close prisoner. They, go there, uh, they work outside and then they go there just to sleep there. I mean, they, they stay, those who are working, I'm saying those who work, they leave the prison during the day and then they go there during the night to sleep. Others, they don't work, they stay the whole day inside the, the prison, but it's not uh, a security, maximum security. Are there also the prisons are uh, the prisons are female or male? Oh female. yeah, just no, just for men. Yeah, just for uh, men. Yeah, just for there, men. there are All specific pri no, there are specific prisons that are built for women. Like in there okay. is a another city, fifty kilometers away from my city, there is a prison that just for women. And then the workers there mostly they are formed by women as well, not for uh -huh. men. Okay. So, uh, uh, ah. is this possible? You show the oh, maps. Oh, okay. Google Maps. That's it. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna show, and I'm gonna show also uh, my city, so we can see the the the, the place that I work. Okay, this is my city. Let me zoom zoom out. Okay. Okay, let's locate. This is Brazil. Okay, this is the state of São Paulo. Okay. Uh, this is the capital, São Paulo city. And my city is located here in the far west of São Paulo. Next to Presidente Prudente is the major city next, 100 kilometers away from my city. And my city is here. This is small city here, Paquembu. Okay, the city uh, is next to the border of Mato Grosso do Sul. Mato Grosso do Sul is a, another state here. There is this river called Paraná River, separates two states, São Paulo and Mato Grosso do Sul. And I'm gonna change just a little bit the the map here so we can see the prisons. Okay, let me see. Okay, this prison is the, the prison that I work in. It's like uh, this this shape of this prison, we have just, I think, 15 in the state of Sao Paulo. It's not a common shape of this. It's like the Superman logo. <laughs> but there is um, four uh, prisons uh, blocks here. As you can see, this is uh, prison blocks. And this is the, the entrance um, and also the house of the directors. Sometimes I work here in the... Uh, security gate house. The, there is a highway, and crossing the highway, there is this semi-open uh, prison here, where <laughs> the prisons they are not uh, in security maximum security. And also two here, but also we have two more that was inaugurated in 2018. Let me see, it's uh, 10 kilometers far from, yeah, this two one. They, they are compact. They are not as big as the, the, the one that I'm working at. Uh, but they are, now they are building like in this format, the, the, the prisons now, because of, yeah, there is uh, less space, you know, the, the cost is lower. And then we have four of them. Oh, let me, let me show the, the, the city. We don't have it many things to do here, you know. It's a kind of a small village. And let me show you some pictures. But I, I was seeing the picture. We have just flowers here. But uh, down there, we have some places here that I'd like to share with you. I'd like to share with you guys. Uh, flowers, 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 flowers. Let me see. OK, OK. This is the courthouse building, the courthouse building. We have the. The bank, Brazil Bank, a uh, place to, to sell cars and a uh, Japan, Japanese square. Um, the bakery, really delicious, the food here, by the way. Oh, this is the, the main square and we have a clock. I, it, I think this clock was built uh, 
By the way, my, my city was built in the 40s, I think 47, 1947. This is the grocery a shop. Yeah, I usually I, I do my grocery shopping here. Yeah, this is a another picture of the the Japanese square. We don't have many th things to do here. It's just uh, the hotel here, <laughs> the only one hotel. The church, my church. Uh, yeah, that's it. Oh, this place is what uh, it's famous. Not not uh, all the cities have these places to rodeo, but we have a, a place to rodeo. It's a famous uh, rodeo that we have here. Okay, let me stop sharing so you can guys. Okay, make no, more no, questions. no. I think it's a nice stop. Tell us about the name of the city. Okay. Oh, okay, okay, oh, okay. Yeah, let me let me share the. Um, let me stop share. Um, let me show you guys the animal called paca. Paca, really cute. It's like a capybara. It's a rodent. This is paca. Okay, Brazilian animal. Paca. Then we have also imbu. Let me show the imbu. It's a delicacy here. It's a kind of fruit that we can find. It's not all the regions here in Brazil, just in the northeast of Brazil, I think. It's a... Do you know either this fruit, pa uh, imbu? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. By the way, in Sao Paulo, near Sao Paulo, there is a, a city called imbu. Oh, yeah. And Paca imbu also yeah. is... Is the name of the, the stadium that we have in, in Sao Paulo. This is the stadium. Some people say that the name Ipacaembu also, it was because uh, the city was built at the same time of the stadium was inaugurated. Oh. It is a famous stadium, uh, stadium I mean, Ipacaembu, the same name. Yeah. Okay, let me stop sharing. Right. Yes. Okay, Crystal, you had a question. Oh, we still cannot hear her. Yeah. Something with the mic. No, we cannot hear. Maybe you can write it down. Just write it in the chat and then somebody can read it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um... Okay, let's, let's go for Carl and then we come back to Crystal. Carl? Uh, yes, All right, everybody. you have a question? Uh, I don't know, so a question. I, I know I know you for a long time, but I yeah. don't think we talked about this. But mm -hmm. What is your biggest challenge working in a prison? For yeah. you, physically? Good, and good question, Carl. <laughs> My biggest challenge is to, to know how to, to face problems that we are not expecting, you know? Because inside the prison, some that we cannot predict what will happen, you know. Wow. Like, um, for me, I got used to that call because uh, when I started working, as I told you before, I was uh, kind of nervous but and afraid as well. But then um, as the time, you know, went on, uh, we had a lot of challenges there, like in twenty. Uh, 2006 and 2005 when there is this riot that they are inside the prison and thankfully I was outside but 25 co-workers they got hostage there inside the prison luckily I was outside but it could be me because one of them was replacing me at the same place that I was working and it was something that we 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 were not prepared, you know. I think the big, yeah. the biggest challenge, Carl, is to um, go into the work knowing what will happen there. This is the biggest challenge, I think. Something unpredictable. Do you know? Do you know uh, I know you know prisons, and you have personal contact. Do you know what their crime was or what they did? Yeah, the uh, the the, um, the prisons in the state also they are separated by kind different kind of crimes. There is prisons that ha uh, has more prisoners. They they have a long sentence, like more than fifteen years. Uh, they are 
uh, their condemnation. But also uh, in in the the prison that I'm working at, like we have like um, robbers, um, um, murderers, and also uh, rapers. We don't have it because rapers they are moved to another specific prison because even among them they are not well accepted there. They have this this fight between rapers and robbers, but most mostly they. Uh, but not so um, with a long, long sentence, uh, time of uh, sentence, you know, like they uh, constantly, they are coming and going in all the time, you know, we are yeah. getting and moving pre uh, prisoners all the time, but it's a mix, you know, there is a specific just for different. Uh, uh, you get to talk to them about about their situation, or yeah, yeah, not allowed to. Yeah, you know? they 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 call uh they call uh, us all the time, Carl. They always look for a way to call us to to have a conversation to to um to make a psychologist attend them, especially in the um, the 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 law system. You know, they they are. They are always look for the the lawyer to call them to to see the, their situations, you know. And then we are like a bridge. We we are a bridge to connect them, to help them to get an appointment to lawyers and to social workers and psychologists. So they are al mm -hmm. always calling us to 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 help them with that. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, before I go and let other people talk, I want to tell you a funny story. When I moved here to where I live now in Louisville, Kentucky, I used to live up in uh, Providence uh, near Boston for 24 years. And then before that in Charleston, and then I grew up in Germany. But it was funny. My kids, my daughter especially, wanted me to move to her and move into her house. I have a, I'm on the porch, there's a little apartment in the back. And this is a very nice neighborhood. There's some nice homes, uh, not very many, but very big homes around here. So when I moved here, um, I, I I didn't think much about it. But there is a, a neighbor lady that lives across. One day she stopped me and she said, well, I know you you're here all the time. We see you driving your your car in and out, but we don't know who you are. And uh, people are asking, "Who are you?" <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I, I thought about it. Well, that's in a way is none of your business. But uh, <laughs> so I thought I'm gonna make a little make it a little fun. So I told the I told her, yeah, I'm I'm uh, Steffi's uh, father, and I moved here. And uh, she said, well, where were you before? And uh, you you might like that. I told them I was in prison. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, for 30 years. And I said, <laughs> and she, and, and she said, oh, really? I said, yeah. And she said, well, can I ask what you did? I said, yeah, I was convicted of multiple murders. <laughs> She got like really pale, and uh, she said, "Well, what what did you do? Why why did you do?" I said, "Well, if you must know, the reason why I got into prison because I killed the people who asked me stupid questions." <laughs> <laughs> so you, can, you can tell that to all the members. <laughs> so now nobody wants to talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot wait for your session. Adeniel, can you please take this moment and make a picture? Make a picture. Please. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Okay, let me take let... a picture before he goes. Oh, that's yeah. so fun. <laughs> okay. All right. Did you okay. Know? Yeah. All right, Carl, thank you so much for sharing their story. Okay. Thank you, Carl. Derek well, is I, in the house. I have, and a lot, has a question. I have a lot more. Trust me. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, thanks. Derek, please ask a question about teaching at prison or something like that. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, okay, um, Derek. Yeah, I picked up that you um, that said that you studied to become a teacher. And I was mm -hmm. wondering in prison, do prisoners uh, actually 
get the opportunity to follow courses and maybe yeah. mm -hmm. uh, are you teaching some of them English maybe or no. something else, <laughs> biology? <laughs> I wish I could. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, they 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 have teachers there. Even last week I was um working with some of them. Like they have a specific places, uh classrooms that they have to go in order to have their classes. But they are just regular school, like I, I think until high school. If they want to go to college, they need to go just outside the prison. But there they there, there is some teachers they are by the way, they are the same teachers that teach in the public education here in the state of Sao Paulo. They are public workers. They are public teachers. They have uh, they teach in at a school, regular schools. And then some of them opted to go to the prison to to educate prisoners because according to them, it's easier to educate a prisoner than uh, a student outside the prison. It's it's hard. The education, the public education here is that, man. It's easier to educate a prisoner than a regular student. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I I cannot teach it there. I try to to educate one in English. Uh, funny story. I When I started learning English, there was this prisoner. He was a, a former flight attendant, and he worked at a bakery there inside the prison. And I used to go there and to speak in English with him, you know. And the other prisoners was looking, oh, what, what guys are you talk, talking about? You know, when we spent some time talking English, this is the only uh, time that I could speak in English with a prisoner because he worked as a, a fly attendant. And then he moved to another prison. But I cannot teach there because we now that our profession was changed to uh, penal, penal um, police, police officer now, According to some coworkers, they they said that we can teach in public schools, but we are forbidden to to teach it to accumulate um, different jobs. You know, when we are working inside a prison. But yeah, I could use my my for, um, when I was in the last year of college. I even though I was graduating biology, but I used to teach uh, private classes math math because I liked a lot math. I was grad. Uh, I am graduating biology, but I could teach a private classes, math private classes. But inside okay. the prison, it's not. Uh, we we cannot teach it there. We can no. just okay. uh, uh, stay with the teachers and watching the prisoners to see if they are trying to do something wrong there inside the, the classroom. <laughs> Thank you. So, All right, that was a great question, Derek. Um, I know Mariana. She wants to ask a question, but there's something going on with her Wi-Fi or something. But let's go back to Crystal. Crystal had like a couple of questions. Uh, the news she'd like to know, uh, did, did you have a chance to check the chat? Like she wants to know how you meet your wife, like your daughter, mm -hmm, which is more mm -hmm, like great. you, or oh, more like your wife. First, how did and, you meet my yes, wife? Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, Chris. So uh, my wife, when I met her, she was just 16. <laughs> I was oh, 20. Uh, oh, oh. And, and I was 23. And she is the sister of a co-worker, um, guy that I knew because he started working with me, but I didn't know. I, I, I did know her only because I remember some years before we started dating. We went to the city. Uh, she lived in a uh, uh, not the same city that I live, but in another city. And I went there with some friends. And one of my friends, uh, uh, you know, dated her for. Uh, and I, I, I was with a friend of hers, and I was, uh, I was, you know, wanting to stay with her, but it was not possible. Then, then. I remember that I used to get this bus to go to another city because I had braces and I need to go to the dentist to check my braces. And I used to, to see her. And one day I went there in a fair uh, and then I saw her. And then I I came to her and I said, oh. And then she said to me, I am Jumar, is the name of my brother-in-law. I am the sister of Jumar. And I, I said, what? I 
I don't believe that. Yeah, really? Oh, okay. And then I said to her, oh, are you going to school now? Oh, I'm going to the school, but I'm leaving earlier. So if you want, I can stay here and wait for you. <laughs> and then I helped her to, to carry her books. I was just this gentleman. And then I said to her, if you want, I, I can start dating you. But she was dating someone else. And she said, oh, and this is... Because I was li a, li uh, a little, you know, a bad luck guy with girls, you know. I was 23, and I think that I, I would die unmarried. And I said to her, oh. But then she <laughs> she, she split with this guy, and she decided to, to start dating with me. And I was in this anxiety, you know, one month, two months, and we are going on. Okay, two months. Uh, oh, okay, I think it, it's going to work. And then we dating for three and a half years and we got married. Oh, she wanted to, to get married without having a house. So I told her, first, we have to buy our house. And then we got married. So I had a car and I sold this car and we had a, our house first. And then we got married after three and a half years. And what else? Let me see. Oh, daughter. Yeah, if, you're, okay. if you're daughter, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then after get married, we we try to have a daughter for after four years, and we decide to have a son or daughter, a kid, and then we try for one year, and we got really nervous. She also was nervous, and uh, we decide to put her in a driver school. When I put her in a driver school, he got pregnant, and then. We're so happy, but we decide to have just one daughter because, you know, raising a kid is not easy. You guys know. And uh, and we decided, yeah, first we decided to, our dream is to, our plans was to have two kids. But after we, we uh, get one and we see that it's not easy to to raise a, a child. And then we were postponing, postponing, postponing. And we decided just to have one. She always uh, was asking for a brother or sister, but now she she got used to be the, the single daughter. What else? But, I mean, so does she look like you or like your wife? Mm, some daughter? people say that is a mix. Some people say that like me, uh, but I my, my hair is not as long as hers. You know, my, <laughs> But yeah, let us some see people, your hair. Let us see your mm, hair. You have no hair. I, I have no hair at all. <laughs> so some people say that she looks like me. Some people say that she looks like her mom. But I think it's a mix. Her and in blood, the personality? Mm, um, I think it's more moms, I think. Her mom. Her moms. Uh, and also... Um, uh, the the I know that her blood type is the same as mine. Okay, o, that's really something. Yeah, it's something. <laughs> okay, um, Mariana, are you there? Can we hear you? Yes, I am, but my All internet right, so is very bad. Yes, um, I wanted to ask, uh, what is the education system like in Brazil? Because we hear a lot of stories about Brazil and schools in Brazil, and I'm I want to know the, the real deal, you know? Yeah. Uh, my whole life, I had no opportunity to pay for a private school. So my whole education was in public school. Even when I was 11 years old, I started going to school at night with 11 year old, 11 years old. Because as I told you before, at the beginning, I had to work to go to the fields and and I, uh, back then, the education, I think it was not a big deal, you know, but I think it's something that is far, far away from the education that we have today. Our daughter, uh, we have a public education uh, in the, the, the city, the municipal education is good. It's not, um, it's a good education. It's like we can compare to, to private education, but our our daughter, she uh, went to public education until the she was in the municipal education, I think the, the sixth year. And then we moved her to a private school. 
we don't have it like a big private and famous private schools here in my city. We just have one. But she uh, started um, studying there, but there is the, when COVID hit, you know, like in 2020, she started learning from home. And then when she got back, she had a problem there. She said to leave, that she wanted to leave. And we moved her to a public, uh, to a, a public school. She stayed there for, I think, some months, but she didn't like. And then now she is in the, the second year of high school. And she took a test to, to go to this public school that is called ETEC. It's a technology school. Uh, she three three times a a, a week she she stayed there uh, until afternoon to to learn administration. It's a good school. We have this. Uh, the name of the school is a tech. It's the technological a te techy school. It's good, but public school in all the, the the cities here, they say that in the northeast of Brazil the public school is good, but in the south southeast of Brazil is terrible. It's like a prison, you know. I just told you about the teachers that it's easier for them to teach in the prison than in the schools, at the schools, because the the students don't respect the, their te teachers, you know. They they uh, use drugs inside the, the, the schools, you know, and it's hard to control them. The public school here, education, it's it's hard. Wow. Did, did you get your answer, Mariana? Yes, I did. Thank you. Thank you very All much. Right. You're welcome. So you have Katie. He well, She has a question. Yes, thank you. Uh, first of all, congratulations on your English. It's absolutely mind-blowing oh, to hear thank someone you so much. who's uh, self-taught and speaking so well. Oh, it's really thank you. Thank impressive. you so much, Kathy. And, uh, and I wanted to know, do you speak any other languages? Have you tried to self-teach yourself again, you know, other languages? And and my other question as well that will follow up uh, Um. Do you plan on traveling anywhere? Because I mean, oh, you, yeah, you're yeah. obviously capable to speak <laughs> so well. Yeah, thank you. Uh, first, when I started learning English, I didn't know that learning English it was something that I would uh, got hooked. You know, like uh, it's something that is I'm. I didn't know because uh, when we when I thought about learning English, I didn't think that it was something that we need to to make different moves, you know, in our tongues, you know, and breathing, you know, it was just uh, to 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 read and to 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 write and to speak with the, you know. But I I, I liked that, you know, I like to to have these uh, different feelings, and I I had plans to learn Spanish, but then I I said to myself, oh, I'm gonna learn English and then after three or four years I'm gonna start learning Spanish. But when I think like start learning a new language from scratch, you know, I don't think I have the guts that I had before, you know. But uh about traveling, I start learning English and we travel to United States six months after I started learning English. I thought I knew something, but I didn't know anything when i got there just me my wife it doesn't speak english my daughter uh neither and then when we got there just three of us and to get the car i had rented a car and i went to this place and i tried to speak in english but the the woman didn't understand she she called she called a a, a guy who who spoke spanish for me it was the same, you know, I, I couldn't understand either <laughs> and then when i got the the car there we I I saw the 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 signs there. The the traffic signs is different in the United States. It's like, um, it's um miles, you know, yards, and it's different. But I using the GPS and I we could uh, get by. I drove all the way from we we landed in Fort Lauderdale and I drove to Miami. We spent the night there and the other day we went to we drove. Uh, drove from or um, Miami to Orlando, almost four hours driving, and there also we stayed for twelve days. Even though I couldn't speak really well, but we could get by there. Just three of us, my family. It was amazing. 
But in 2022, we traveled to Cancun in Mexico. But there I could speak well. So like you said, some woman came to me and asked me if I was American guy. I said, oh, I'm not, I'm Brazilian. <laughs> why, I, why are you uh, asking that? Oh, because of your English, it's perfect. It was in 2022. And then I, I, I don't like to ask people how my, my English is, you know, but coming from people who were not the same as the same country as I live in you know, Brazil, I think it's something to to be considered, you know, like she, uh, both of them were Mexican women and they said about my English. So there I could even complain, even I complain in English because when we left the hotel, the woman forgot to take it down, to, to bring our luggage. And the man was waiting for us to, to get us to the airport and the, the luggage was not ready. And then I went there and... And then I complained to this girl in English. <laughs> I had to. <laughs> now we have plans to go to Europe. I don't know when because, you know, my salary is not a good salary. My wife, it doesn't work. And I have plans to, to go to visit Europe. But now I can uh, get by there. And then we are waiting just to get the money, enough money to go there to, to visit Europe. Oh, wow, Adenil. So now we don't need any hotel expenses. So Oh, just... great. <laughs> Very true. You're now you can invite a few here. people in Europe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. I think Thank you nailed you. your question, Katie. Yeah. Uh, Linda had a question about hobbies. Can you can you turn your mic on, Linda? Yes. Hello. Um, uh, hello. Good evening. Do you hear me? Yeah. Okay, um, you're so enthusiastic when you uh, speak about uh, uh, your learning English. Um, are you enthusiastic also? Do you have other hobbies or mm -hmm. what do you do uh, besides your work uh, in the prison? Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. I'm a morning bird, okay? My uh, wake up, wake up, waking up time, it, uh, Simone knows, it's like three, three and a half in the morning. I get up really, really early every day. I go to bed really early. I don't know if I go to bed early because I get up early or if the, the other way around. <laughs> I don't know. But I like to, I have something, I'm a strict person. I like to do something, things that I do every morning. Um, I like my routine, you know. And as I told at the beginning, I like to run. I started running in 2011 because my cholesterol levels was so high. But I think because of my daddy, my daddy, his cholesterol level is high and mine was too. And I decided to start walking and I decided to start jogging and running. And I got uh, hooked, like I got hooked at English. And today when I don't run, like some, um, I got hurt sometimes, you know, because runners have this, uh, they are prone to, to, prone to, to get hurt. And I like, I stay some. Uh, I think two months without running and I start dreaming about to run, you know, I, 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 mm -hmm. I dreamt that I was running because it's something in my subconscious mind. And I, I participate in some races here in this, the cities. Uh, next 20th, I'm going to participate in a, a race in, in a city, 150 kilometers away from my city. And I didn't get trophies. There, the, there is this co-worker. He is my best friend. I invited him to start running with me. He didn't uh, run. He work, uh, He works with me. And now he works faster than me. I cannot I cannot ask him. Now we participate in all the, this race. And I like also to, um, to draw. Oh, I'm going to show you guys uh -huh. two caricatures that I did. And I separate for you guys to see. Uh, but I, I usually I don't keep them. I like to draw, but as soon as I, I draw, I, I tear them, you know. But my wife likes to to keep them. This is I, I watch this series called Dexter, and there is this Michael C. Hall, the actor, and I was really yeah. fan. And then I, I make this uh, uh, caricature like he, he been like a spider because he was a serial killer and used to kill people like using this method about wrapping the people we know and then I did that this caricature and another one it's from uh of a co-worker this is a co-worker 
<laughs> you work with me. Oh, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I start uh, drawing when I was seven because I have a cousin. He liked to draw. He got a course drawing, and I was crazy when I. I used to see him like drawing. For me, it was something amazing. And then I started drawing. And uh, what else? I like to build computers. I have a gamer computer that I built, and I love to format computers. Some people come to my home to format computers to help them with tax problem. I also have some clients, and we have here in Brazil a time that we have to to fill out uh, the income tax return. And I help them with their income tax return to fill them out. And that's it. Um, wow. But yeah, and I like to wow. stay at home to watch movies in English and now series and yeah. Kind of lots, lazy guy. Lots, lots, Wow, okay. Neil, so <laughs> nice. Um, let's see if Jean, Jean, are you gonna ask a question? Are you getting ready with your French? Maybe Kathy can help. Kathy's French. If 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 it's a little bit difficult, you can ask Kat. She's gonna translate for you. Go ahead, John. I don't have I don't I don't have a special mask on my store. Today I don't okay, have Okay, no worries. Mask. Okay. I think Aura can ask another question. Let's see if she's ready. Hello, I am ready. Um, I have my generic question. I was gonna ask about um because we have had like a few Brazilians, so I know generically like the crime rate, but I just wanted to know what it's like in your town and maybe like where you grew up in as a kid. I want to know about the crime rate. Yeah, um, I I I live in a small town. We have not so uh high crime rate as uh we have in big cities. But we have just because we we live in a small city doesn't mean that we don't have crimes here. We have uh, it's uh, it's not common, you know, but uh, with this kind of prisons that came here, uh, the population uh, changed, you know, and people that didn't live here they start moving to here uh, uh, from from the, the from capital or from from uh, bigger cities and. But it's not so common here. We have a lot of. Um, I I think our city is too small to have the the high. I think uh, um, suicide rates. A lot of people killing themselves here. I don't know why, but the the um, suicidal tendencies here is it's big. You know, people jumping from bridges, um, uh, hanging themselves. I don't know, but. I think it's more cases of suicide than homicides here. Well, I think that's very international. It's, it's global at the yeah. moment with suicides. Okay, Crystal, do you have another question? All right, so she rolled down. Oh. Did, did you write down? Okay, uh, this, that's me. Did you write down already? Crystal. Oh, because I, I cannot see it either. Oh. Do you see that? I didn't also have a question. Mm, no. Oh, no. Mm. Crystal. The, the, last, the last question from Crystal was the, about analysis. your daughter. Yeah, was about my daughter. All right, Crystal, write down. Anyone else? Guys, we're running out of time. Anyone else with a question? No? Oh. Hey, hey. Go ahead. Okay, well, Daniel. So, so I know you a long time, all right? I right? mm -hmm. wish you a, a, a nice guy. So, uh, I curious. Do sorry. Do the prisoners like you? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I they like are, you so yeah, much. <laughs> yeah, they they are a big fan of mine. They called me they called me Mister Braguinha or Mister Little oh. Braga. Yeah, <laughs> Mister Little Braga, Mister Little Braga, Mister Braguinha. Yeah, they like me. Yeah, I am so uh, talkative oh, so. with them. You know, I respect them as much as they respect me. You know, it's a um, 
it's the way that we treat them like human beings, you know, like us prisoners. We have not to have prejudice against them. And I treat them like I'm treating ever everyone else, you know. This is the, the key. Oh, very nice to yeah. us. You're good. Oh, thank you. Really, really, you are a good guy. Uh, Oh, oh nice. thank you. Thank you, Chris. I just saw your, your, so your text. We got, a, text. we got a question from Crystal. Mm. Did you, can you read oh, it? Oh, she, she, Crystal asked me about food. Yeah, the, um, I helped my my wife to cook rice, okay? I'm good to rice, uh, cook rice and fried eggs. <laughs> He's a great cook. Yeah, oh, uh, this, uh, everywhere. my specialty. Crystal? My specialty is to make <laughs> is to make coffee without sugar, ah. without sugar, just coffee. Yeah, that's really typical Brazilian, you know. Brazilians yeah. eat a lot of rice and oh, beans, but, of course. I, I, and I, I, my, the food of my wife is way, way, way better than mine. So let let <laughs> leave her cook for for us. I think it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> all right i would like to say that today at the news especially for you we have two couples and that is linda and derek who are here as a couple we have aura and nikki also as a couple oh really and the surprise is that crystal is linda's sister but crystal lives mm. in norway and linda lives oh. in Denmark. So Great. there's also something that I'd like to come up with. Oh. Is later on, I'm going to hold sessions with sisters because I already have sessions with couples. So Linda and Crystal, get ready for your session as sisters or brothers. Richard, do you have a brother? <laughs> Maybe I'm going to ask Richard to come with his brother. I've got four, but they all live oh, in a different he has four. Oh my gosh! I think <laughs> they all live in different provinces. Of the, <laughs> I I am already fully booked by the end of this year. So <laughs> if I get all your brothers and all the family members next year, I don't know if if I'm gonna have days off. It's gonna be just sessions. Anyhow, guys, thank you so much for being here. It was lovely. It's ten o'clock, so I have to go. Yeah. Adam, so I, I don't have what to say. I mean, I'm so impressed, and I, oh, I think that everyone is going to agree with me. You should be so proud of yourself for all oh. your achievements. I, I, I feel ashamed to speak English the way I do talking to you because I've been learning English my whole life, and you sound even better than me. Oh, wow! Yeah. Really, really amazing. There, there, I, I, amazing. I, 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 I I could allow the butterflies to come up from my my stomach now. Now they Nobody are free. Knows. Yeah, <laughs> the butterflies knows. are free. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate this moment with you guys, and I hope you all have a wonderful week ahead. And it was a pleasure for me to to answer your questions. Wow, lovely. Okay. Thank you Thanks. all, and I see you soon. Thank you. Thank have you, Thank you, guys. Bye bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, bye-bye.